2021 saw an improvement from 2020 as nonprofit leaders and donors dealt with a world in flux. How you deal with these changes will equate to how much income will increase in 2022. Stay tuned for ways to formulate a fundraising strategy and grow your donations in this new year. We enter every year with hope and optimism, but this is especially true this new year. The word that best describes 2020 was pivot, as we learn to deal with an ever-changing landscape in fundraising. In 2021, the word was adapt, as we found ways to make our fundraising efforts work within constraints. We started to see a light at the end of the tunnel, but not a lot of nonprofit organizations were able to say that they returned to normal. It's hard to predict what the word will be for 2022, but it seems that we'll have a combination of things occurring, a return to normal in some strategies, but a new normal in others. I'm encouraged as income for most nonprofits either stayed steady the past two years or increased, and I'm not seeing that change for 2022. And that bodes well for your organization if you plan properly. As we craft our fundraising plan for 2022, there's four key strategies to implement. Strategy number one, conduct a situational analysis. Before planning for the future, it's always important to get a glimpse of the past. Overall, did your income increase, decrease, or stay the same? Did the total number of donors increase or decrease? Did you have a net loss or gain of donors? How many new donors did you acquire? Evaluate how each income program or strategy did, how many of those strategies were able to return to pre-pandemic numbers, income, attendance, etc. What I saw most from events with it was that the attendance numbers were 50 to 75% of pre-pandemic, but income was 100% or more. That's a nice trend as many organizations spent less and made the same or more a real net gain. Did your staff increase or decrease? Some staff were let go due to funding issues in 2020, and others left or decided not to return due to COVID. So evaluate the hand you've been dealt and what staffing needs you have. Step number two, set income goals per strategy. It's important to have realistic but optimistic, some would call them faith stretching goals for your income strategies. Break your efforts into three categories if you haven't done so already, mass, middle, and major. The mass category consists of efforts to reach the masses, the 70 to 80% of your donors that bring in 30 to 20% of your income. Direct mail and direct marketing fall into this category. Both became the pillar of stability for many organizations over the past two years as personal meetings were either limited or non-existent. COVID boosted direct mail income by 10 to 15% in 2020, and it looks as if that same will happen for 2021. I'm not predicting another banner year for direct marketing in 2022, but it seems that people have begun to rely on or have returned to opening letters and emails again. Social media and email marketing saw a tremendous surge during times of isolation, and while those numbers dropped off from the 2020 peak, they are still much higher than the pre-pandemic times. I believe it's going to be important to double down on your communication strategies, more appeal letters and emails, more newsletters, and more public awareness PR via social media. If you don't already have a presence on social media, you're going to be left in the dust. You'll be an old relic on the shelf. I don't mean to be harsh, but it's true. As I've said in other videos, you don't have to be on every social media platform, but pick one or two that your audience seems to use most and that you feel most comfortable with and improve on that with every new post. If you're only posting weekly, it's as if you aren't posting at all. Consider posting at least five days per week, skipping the weekends, or schedule posts over the weekends and post seven days a week. But all studies show that the real dynamic growth in social media comes from posting three times a day. I know that's daunting. Now, I'm not saying you have to be there tomorrow, next month, or even next year but you should eventually work up to that amount if you ever hope to have tens or hundreds of thousands of followers. The middle category consists of a person or team who calls donors regularly. Since it's impossible for most organizations, even with a team, to call everyone on their mailing list, their mass list, a subsection of that list is created. For most organizations, that subsection of the list consists of donors 
giving or with the capacity of giving a large single gift of 500 or more or 1,000 or more, depending on the number of people you have to cultivate in each category. There should be a ceiling to that as the most critical few, the 20% giving 80% of your income, should receive personal visits. We'll discuss that in a minute. But the people in the middle category typically get the same letter as those in the mass category. But in a perfect world, understanding your limitations, that letter would include a personalized version of the letter, Dear John or Dear Mary. Those people are called following appeal letter depending on the frequency of your mailings. I would never recommend calling 12 times a year to ask for money if you mail that many times, but at a minimum, three mailings in key times of the year should be followed up with a phone call. Spring, fall, and year end are minimum times to do an appeal call. In between, those in the mass category can be called to get updates on how their money is being used without an appeal. Now, that can be perceived as a passive ask and people may give after receiving a call from you. That's an added blessing. Faith-based organizations can solicit prayer requests and if that's done, please record those requests so that the next call can include a question about the status of that prayer request. It's important to add that an effective customer relationship management, CRM software, be obtained and used for any personal contact made with a donor, whether that's a letter, email, call, or visit. The major category consists of, as I mentioned, the critical few, those 20% who have given 80% of the income to your organization. That should be a fairly manageable number as those people will be visited on a regular basis. Typically, those individuals giving a large single gift of 5,000 or 10,000 or more per year. But as I said, every organization is different. See which dollar category works best for you. I mentioned in my video, Growing Donations in 2021, listed above, that I employ a strategy called 333 pause. That's three letters, notes, emails, three phone calls, and three visits over a 12 month period to each of these in the, ma in the major category. I have found this strategy to be extremely effective. It doesn't have to be so legalistic that you feel like a failure if you just can't give, get even one visit with a donor per year or can't make all three calls. Celebrate the little victories. It is a guideline and if followed will help you enhance and deepen relationships with current donors. Prospect donors, those who have the capacity to give at this dollar category can be run through a 111 strategy over the 12 months. That's 111 contacts. I've created various videos to help you get appointments with and make proposals to major donors and place them in a playlist listed above. The fourth strategy that intersects with the three categories would be events. If your organization conducts events and relies on those for income, include when the event will occur and how many people you intend to invite hope to intend, and how much income, gross and net, you hope to see from that event. Your organization may also rely on foundations, plan giving, and estate design, United Way, combined federal campaign, or other strategies for income. Set goals for each. Strategy number three, craft a communication and marketing strategy. Of course, all these categories mentioned rely on various levels of communication and public relations, but it's important that communication and marketing be included as an umbrella in all the areas. Direct marketing consists almost exclusively of communication and marketing, but the mid and major categories add an extra layer of communication which includes phone calls, personal notes, and emails, and personal visits. Strategy number four, identify staffing needs and responsibility for implementation of strategies. It's important that your plan also includes the staff needed to properly implement the income strategy listed above, especially when it comes to staff heavy activities like events. When I say staffing, I'm not just referring to full or part-time staff, but volunteers as well. Many, if not most nonprofits utilize volunteers and give them great responsibility in running and implementing an income strategy. Events are some of the best ways to utilize volunteers. Proper utilization of human resources in this COVID era is one of, if not the most valuable things that you can accomplish. So it's important to recruit staff well and treat them right. Getting the right people is just as important as doing the job right. Most, if not all of these people have a heart for our cause and are willing to give countless hours for little or no pay. So treat them like gold. 
Too many plans are established without recognizing who, what leader will be responsible for implementing a strategy. Each leader should be required to have a plan for implementing the strategy, but they should also be given an adequate budget and staff to properly see the tasks through to completion. If you incorporate the strategies used in this video and in my other videos on this channel, this should be a year of dynamic growth and hopefully your best year ever in regards to increased income. Dynamic growth can be achieved through hard work, tremendous focus, and countless prayers. You can do this and we can do it together. I believe in you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there was something you especially liked. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of the next video release. Remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. On Instagram at DevEffectivenessStrategies or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.